Their final stop is the last apartment on the block, rumored to have a ghost haunting the apartment. As the girl unlocks the door, a boy is seen lurking in the shadows, giving a smirk as maybe it's finally time. After correctly inputting the pasco, she swings open the door with no fear. Unfortunately, the boy has no clue about the rumors, nor will he expect what's about to happen to him and to the peachy realtor. At first glance, the boy says, wow. But in reality, he wasn't talking about the room, rather his eyes were instead fixated on the woman's twin dragons. Whoa, he says in his head, as the realtor is busy thinking she's finally found something that the boy would want, since that means money, baby. He then starts to look at her exactly like I did about the Counter-Strike 2 announcement, so he starts getting more red than my thighs after falling asleep on the toilet. Regardless, she eagerly starts showing off all the features in the furnished apartment, still thinking she might actually have this in the bag. However, as she shows more and more features, our boy accidentally ends up checking some other features, and I am not talking about the apartment, if you know what I mean. This then goes on for an eternity, as time seemingly slows down due to him getting distracted by all the features he gets a good close-up on. But then, as she shows off the last amenity inside the house, the greatest disaster known to all men begins to strike. The disaster, you may ask? Well, we call it the random third leg uprising, and our boy is currently victim to the disaster. Upon noticing, she instantly turned back around flustered, but doesn't help as the cake she brought is still in plain sight. Our boy then begins to panic as she leaves the room to give him time to destroy all excitement within him. But every time we have that random disaster, it never seems to go away whenever you want to, so a mysterious ghost appears while he desperately attempts to quell the rebellion. Cold air then began to flood the room as if the ghost is actually like the biggest bro you have ever encountered. He then watches on as the ghost begins to peek behind the door. But luckily for the boy, hot air rises, but cold air makes you shrink. Suddenly, the ghost turned around, making the boy's rebellion quickly reach level zero as he can't believe what the hell he's seeing. The boy doesn't dare make a single move, so the ghost started to inch closer and closer to him, so it finally dawned on the boy why the place was listed so cheap. Moments later, the boy's worst fears became reality as the ghost slowly whispered hello into his ear. It was at this moment his life began to flash before him as if it's game over, but the ghost just asks if he can see him. Of course, the boy refused to speak as he's stun-locked in disbelief, probably accidentally wetting the floor already. Eventually, after an entire rank Valorant game, the boy finally moves as he decides to just act as if he can't see the ghost. However, his plan backfires on him as the ghost decided to do a sussy baker move, causing him to actually react, alerting the ghost that the boy can actually see him. As the ghost pulls his pants back up after the big brain move, the boy starts screaming for his mommy, just like the bald man with the last name that rhymes with fate. As the boy continues to panic and yell, the turntables begin to turn as the ghost tells him to simmer down since he isn't trying to take over his soul or anything like that. Confused, the boy calms down as he worriedly thought that ghosts hate humans that enter their realm or area, but this ghost is special since he reveals that he's interested in something else. The ghost continues by asking if he liked the girl inside, telling him that he can actually help him land her instead, acting as if he's some kind of love guru. And just like that, our wimp instantly forgot that just seconds before, he was yelling for mommy. Now that the ghost has his attention, the ghost offered him his magical powers that will allow the boy win the girl over, right here, right now, in an empty house. With no hesitation, he agrees only on the condition that he doesn't take over his soul or body, then he would totally be down to receive his magical abilities. Although the ghost still didn't tell him what he wants in return, the boy was too eager for whatever magical powers the ghost could give him. So he blinked once and thought about it for one second, then said deal. After agreeing to the deal, the ghost told him to touch his hand, and if he does it, he will transfer his magical abilities to him temporarily. As such, the boy extended his hand, warning the ghost that if he did anything strange, he'll call in the ghost busters to get him busted. Nonetheless, the two finally shook their hands together. Upon contact with each other's hands, they begin to glow as the surrounding area also fills with light as the magical powers start to transfer from the ghost to the boy. After letting go, the boy is amazed at what he just witnessed, so he astonishingly looks at his hand, looking like as if he just held Jenna Ortega's hand. When all the light dissipated, he started waving his hand around, thinking he might now be a wizard, so maybe he could cast Fireball. But nothing happens, so the ghosts slide in exactly like how I slide into people's messages, revealing to him that his powers only activate when he gets in contact with the girl's raw skin. Suddenly, the door opened, with no one near it to turn the knob. Behind the door is actually the realtor lady, where we discover that the room is actually a bathroom, with special toilets that wash the bum efficiently. So she walks out the room, still trying her hardest to sell the house, so she poses and is like, doesn't this place look amazing in person? 
Since our boy is from the simp breed, he just agrees no matter what, just delighted that he could talk to someone as beautiful as her. However, he starts to stare at her, since now he has a mission to complete, to somehow find a way to get close so he can come in contact with her to activate his brand new powers. To test out his new abilities, he finally gets an idea to get close, so he decides now is the time to act on his new opportunity. He starts sweating harder than people try harding on Roblox front lines as he asks for her business card. Such a tall task for a simp like him, but no problem for her, as it's her job, so she quickly searches for it inside her bag. Afterwards, she finds it and hands it over to him, so he jumped on her hand, almost faster than people chasing a free pizza sign. Upon grabbing her hand with both hands, light begins to glow, tipping off the boy that his new magical abilities should now be activated. Out of nowhere, he gets startled as he notices something appear on top of her head. It turns out to be a loading screen, but the woman is still unfazed, as if his powers hasn't done anything to her yet. A second later, a random flash appeared on top of her head, where he gets notified of the screen, giving information about her, like her name, age, and interest in him. He then lets go after the ghost reappeared, joyfully asking if his power worked for him. As the girl looks on, the ghost welcomes him by saying this is one of his powers, but he calls this one specifically the scanning screen. Another notification then occurred on top of the realtor's head, telling the boy that his tutorial quest has started. It follows up with another pop-up, alerting him that the quest difficulty is easy, and it reveals to him that she's been divorced lately. As such, the game-like system orders him to increase her interest and excitement level to max. However, the girl begins to look around uneasy, as our boy has been staring behind her for too long, due to him looking at all the new pop-ups. To defuse the situation, he waves her off and tells her how she's just so fit, causing her to say excuse me. As the simp transforms into a new person, the ghost watches on as if he's the biggest hype man ever, surprisingly being super direct with her works as she starts blushing from just him saying how he likes how fit the realtor is. Nevertheless, he gains the reward of additional tips and tricks from the system, due to him increasing her interest level to A from B. Another notification then appeared, basically giving him a guide on how to pick up the girl according to things she would fall for or like specifically. With the countdown appearing, he's quick to tell her to not move, as he says there's something on her ankle. He then went for contact with the ankle, as the guide followed up telling him to put her at ease by claiming that it's just dust. With just two simple tricks from the game guide, she begins to tremble, almost signaling to the boy that he's almost fully made it in. Like a jump scare, our hype man appeared behind him, telling him that he's almost at the finish line, so he gets the boy to stand up and look straight into her eyes. As he does so, he attempts to become an alpha male capable of actually holding the gaze from a girl unlike some people who run away. As he holds eye contact, you can clearly see him sweating, but it's all about faking it till you make it, so she asks why he's looking at her like that. Unfortunately for the boy, this is the farthest he's ever gone with a girl, so he freezes, not knowing what to do after locking eyes with one. His new best friend then comes to the rescue, as the ghost pushes him to fall over on her, so like a romantic movie with gender roles swapped, the boy begins to fall on top of her. The no-name realtor starts to blush even more as the system notification appears, alerting the boy that his target's interest and excitement is rapidly increasing, where it might even break over 9,000. Now stuck again, unsure on what to do, this time he gets saved by the game guide as it tells him the cheat to winning over Kang. As such, he whispers to Kang how she's so beautiful, causing her knees to waver due to his crazy game guide rays. Now that he's opened the gates to her heart, the ghost reminds him that her weak point is the neck, so he winks. Another pop-up then appeared as he attacks the weak point, telling him that Kang's excitement level has reached max. The ghost then watched on super enthused as if there's no such thing as ghost girls running around. With the boy completing all the quest assignments, rewards started to pour in, but he didn't care as he decides he needs to water his growing banana plantation instead of finding out his rewards right now. Anyway, sorry editor, it's time to tell the guys to use their imagination as we turn into Cultured Street. Oh and um, the ghost was watching the entire time, giving him tips, as the divorced lady is too experienced at watering banana trees. Afterwards, Kan comes clean as she reveals to him that there's rumors of a ghost living here, so he agrees, saying it must be weird living with one. Now offended, the ghost tries to entice him to buy the apartment, offering his abilities every day if he lives here, and the only thing he wants is to be able to watch. The boy is then sussy weirded out at his request, but then again, he tells himself they got the score due to his abilities. The ghost then gets desperate due to him saying he doesn't believe in ghosts, but the ghost points at the cake, telling him to think about it. However, the boy starts ignoring him, as he gets his brain gets clouded by the banana tree growing, so he asks Kang for a second round. In the end, the boy agrees to choose to live with him, since he thinks a ghost watching him isn't that bad, since the girls can't see the ghost.
Now accepting a magical pact to have a ghost best friend seeing his everyday move, the boy decides to ask how he became a ghost anyways. The ghost then reveals that he accidentally slipped on a bar of soap and fell on his head. At least he didn't drop the soap in prison. Upon hearing the sad news, the boy asks what he studied when he was alive. The ghost responded by telling him that he dropped out due to his abilities, since he made Megabank being a male host, easily satisfying any customer with ease. Anyways, long story short, if you guys want ghost magical powers, he just says to get good, since he's just built different man. Rule number one, just be attractive. Rule number two is to always follow rule number one or else be a beta male. Nevertheless, our boy didn't care about any of his stories, so the first chance he gets, he asks the true question of whether or not he can use his powers on any girl now. Upon hearing the question, the ghost gets super worked up, telling him to simmer down sussy baka, since even though he has powers now, he still needs to know the basics of being a sigma male. The ghost then points at his hair, calling him a bold boy, telling him that he needs a haircut to help fix his unappealing face for girls. He then says that a guy is nothing without his hair, so we hear that guys, just go bald like the top G. Afterwards, the ghost reveals his name is Gam, so Gam urges him to go visit a specific salon, since he knows a girl over there. Later in the afternoon, Gam is actually able to convince the boy to leave the house to get his needed haircut to win some girls. Upon arriving at the aforementioned salon, things get a little sussy as Gam's face tells me that something is about to happen. The boy then enters the salon awkwardly, yelling out loud initially, claiming that Gam told him to come here as a recommendation. It's then revealed that there's only one person inside, a pink head bombshell that somehow already knows the name of our boy before we did, Wei Nam Sung. Somehow, Gam the ghost was able to text her that Sung is coming over, so she explains this is the first time Gam has ever referred anyone. Meanwhile, our simp is already bright red at the onset of a beauty, so Sung just claims that Gam always recommended the salon. As he sits down, the girl asks him what Gam has been up to lately, since she has no clue that Gam passed away long ago. Luckily, Gam comes out of the woodwork, telling Sung to just make something up, since she'll believe him as she has no idea where Gam has been. As such, Sung tells her that Gam went abroad to go to some amateur Roblox Fruits tournaments so he could warm up for his Counter-Strike 2 Phase Clan appearance. She's then like, dang, really? I can't figure him out. Maybe because he's already dead, bro. Speaking of the ghost, as the girl turns around with cake in the open, he whispers to Sung that if he listens to him, he can easily bag her. As Gam hypes him up like a true best friend, Sung gets worried since he's never complimented a girl in his life other than Kang from the morning. Thus, his confidence begins to waver, but the girl perks up, asking what she can do for him. He then says no bowl cup please, so as she gets closer, he starts to shake, forgetting he has the powers all boys would die for in their dreams. Luckily for our boy, he gets accidental contacts so of his special ability pops up, revealing her name and other information. Somehow, she's already into him, just for being a referral. It doesn't matter though, since our wimp is taking ages to gain some confidence, which is why every girl says confidence is key. 69 minutes later, he finally snaps out of it, so he randomly begins complimenting her nose. And just like that, he's in. Remember guys, if you like a girl, just say nice nose bro and you got it in the bag. He then continues, throwing more compliments at her left and right, claiming how she could totally be a model on the King anime runway. A pop-up then occurred, notifying him that Ju's interest has increased even more, basically at max level. Within just seconds of gaining confidence and throwing compliments from the game guide, Sung already looks like he has a new fish in his pond, ready to jump out to get grilled over the fire. The two then hit it off while Jung is left amused as he didn't think it would actually be this easy, forgetting that he has crazy magical powers to win anyone over. Nonetheless, Ju finishes obliterating the bowl haircut, so she takes off her apron, dragging along Sung to the other side of the room, so she could finish and wash his hair. But then, out of nowhere, another notification popped up, alerting Sung that he has received quest tips due to her dramatically increased interest in him. Sung then peeks as Yu attempts to bring him to another corner, probably thinking that things are going way too good too fast. It doesn't matter though, as another quest tip popping up orders him to get excited after feeling the touch of Ju, so he's ready to rumble to take over the cake's cherry. Gam then appears, calming our boy down, telling him to relax, as he'll feel the excitedness flow through him as soon as she starts shampooing his hair. Sung then sits down, anxiously waiting for what the hell everyone is talking about, so his heart begins to race. It then dawned on him what they meant by excitedness, as adrenaline begins to rush down to his feet, due to the angle she's shampooing his hair with. But then I forgot this was a cultured anime, so I didn't expect her to fully attack him with her twin dragons head on. It was at this moment he knew he would lose the November challenge, as he can't help himself get excited, as if the dark magician girl is busy activating her trap card right on top of him. Like a true savage, she doesn't even give him time to breathe, 
as she continually fires off lasers from her twin dragons with great precision into his face. Her surprise siege attack was so good that Sung is brought to the heavenly realms, where he finds himself feeling like he's floating amongst the clouds. She then says she's basically turning on his light bulb to max brightness, but there's a limit before the light bulb bursts and the glass breaks. But then, it finally happened, she noticed a fully upright rebellion, so she stops for a moment to stare at the monument. As such, she abruptly stopped as she went to go dry off a towel. While having a smirk on her face, since she knows another towel is about to get absolutely flooded, Sung is then left shocked, still unsure how the crazy game tips always work, but he doesn't care as he's enjoying every second of it. Suddenly, she intently drops a brown rag on the ground. Things then get real, as if it's time for overtime as Yu leans over and whispers to him, saying how his shoulders are so tense. Another quest tip then pops up, alerting Sung that her excitement level has reached 9000, so he just needs to say one final word to complete his mission. It then turns out that the game menu wants him to be even more cringe, ordering him to tell her that he's also feeling tense somewhere else too. Luckily, just as he's about to nope out of everything, Gam saves the day, telling the dumb boy to trust the screen, since it never lies and it's literally a magical ability. Thanks to Gam, he stops being a wimp, so he grabs her hand and pulls a cheesier pickup line than my moldy cheese pizza. But you know what guys, it works. Just remember, follow rules 1 and 2 and you are golden in real life. Anyways, our boy is smart to pick her up as she can now feel the rebellion and the uprising more clearly. Of course, as things escalate faster than me making diarrhea jokes, Gam instantly pops up to watch the entire event unfold, telling Sung to enjoy himself. Ju then goes to get Sung's drink, but she's an expert, so she easily handles the extra large in one gulp. His banana plantation then accidentally explodes in like 15 seconds, so Ju looks at him in sadness, saying she was just getting started in watering the soil. Then out Gam, absolutely frustrated that his plantation is finished already, so he tells him to get the reward from the tutorial quest. It's then revealed that he got a pill as a reward from the quest, that allows the shrunk tree to instantly grow into a full banana tree. In a panic, he uses it, as he doesn't want to let everyone down, so it resets his level. And just like that, he's back to brand new, as if he visited Nurse Joy at the Pokemon Center to get fully healed. Thus, he gets the real show on the road as Gam watches Sung's banana plantation devour the pink hair. The rest was history as he transforms into his cosplay of a jackhammer, and basically this is where you must use your imagination, unless you're our editor. Regardless, Gam and Sung leave the salon, heading straight to the restaurant that Sung works at now next. Upon arriving, Gam looks on, complimenting how huge the building is, totally not being a suspect sussy baka. Meanwhile, Sung is amazed at how he looks like now, after getting rid of his bold cut and changing into better attire. However, even though he looks better now, Gam still calls him a loser, since he still acts like one, even with his crazy magical powers that he has inherited. With the uncalled for insult, Sung turns around and starts insulting him, yelling at him to try and not to talk to him inside. But then, Gam tells him to remember how to ignite his abilities, since he's sure that he has to be working with some solid tens at a big restaurant. In an instant, all his anger towards Gam gets replaced with his sussy tendencies, as he realizes that Gam is actually big brain since he's right. As such, he enters the building, where he encounters the general manager welcoming him and asking why he's here today. But Sun just waves him off, telling him that he only came by today on his day off since he missed him. So the two started catching up as the manager began to ask him about his brand new house and how his move-in was. It then turns out that the manager is actually super nice, so he sets up a housewarming party for him, asking a girl named Sung Hee to tag along. However, every time Gam sees a pretty girl, he instantly shows up, since he can't help himself being a true bro, as he always wants to help out brother Sung. He then takes a closer look, telling Sung that he should totally prioritize her tonight even though she's totally ignoring Sung the entire time. Gam then continues on, claiming that he knows girls like Sung Hee are always the type to be the craziest when they enter and meet a banana plantation ready to be harvested. Just as Gam wanted, a brand new sub-quest appeared in front of Sung, ordering him to create his first ever partner. Another one followed up, alerting him that due to the sub-quest, Sung Hee's interest level has skyrocketed from an abysmal level all the way to level B. For the first time ever, she actually glances at him, although her face still looks like she wants to puke. Nevertheless, she finally makes her first introduction by grunting as if she knows what events are about to occur on the horizon. Fast forward to the evening, where Gam attempts to wake up Sung over and over, as if he apparently passed out. Gam then yells at him silly, ordering him to wake up even though Sung has no idea where he is currently. It's then revealed that he's actually at a motel in the early morning, but Sung doesn't remember a thing. Eventually, after a few more head scratches, he began to remember the night he had partying as he was having so much fun at his impromptu housewarming party. 
Upon hearing what's happened, Yam looks at him in disgust and disbelief that a wimp like him could actually black out from just a few drinks. But then, Gam delivered some good news as Sung gets a grip of reality. As it turns out, Sung, he actually went with him home to his motel. We further discover that she's actually still here right now, busy in another room showering. A flashback then occurred back at the restaurant, where the manager reveals to Sung that he's actually dating Sung Hee on the down low. But since the manager is also a bro, he urges Sung to try his luck at the branch, since the branch is known for having the best girls. The manager then tells him that he will keep it between them two, as if any word gets out, and both will get fired for dating within the company. The story continues with Sung deciding to keep his mouth shut, not wanting to expose his manager for dating someone in the company. But since his target is the one his manager bro is currently dating, he begins thinking about dropping the sub-quest. After all, he does not want to go after someone else's girlfriend, even though he has his newfound magical abilities ready to go at any time. Suddenly, Ghost Bro Gam appears, telling him that it shouldn't matter since girls are girls, man, but we all know what he wants. Sung then attempts to ignore Gam as our sussy Becca friend wants to watch him in person again, since his powers is basically streaming to a ghost person. Unfortunately, Sung drinks too much and guess who brings him back to a motel? It's the manager's girlfriend. It was at this moment, Gam knew Sung screwed up, but to Gam, everything is going perfectly, as he knows he's about to see his favorite pastime. But then, as if fate intervened, Sung regains consciousness, so he starts sweating profusely, wondering what the heck is going on. He instantly looks at the banana plantation, wondering if his soil is currently covered, trying to make sure he didn't accidentally grow a tree on a girl's property. Gam then reappears, calming him down as Sung discovers he accidentally threw up as soon as he arrived at the motel, so she's cleaning herself up. The Gam in front of him, Sung clings onto his true self, telling Gam that there is no way he can go through with this, no matter what he says. However, Gam is a menace, and the missing horn on his head is gradually growing, and he needs Sung to help him since, you know, he's a ghost. Afterwards, the game screen appears with his powers, showing that Sung Yi is now super interested in him since she's apparently the village's bike. Gam then alerts Sung that Sung Yi already has her mind set, acting as if he's Oprah, since he's giving him the win and a girl to go with it. Regardless, with Sung's weakening resolve, he banks on his time he spent with a nice manager, telling himself that Sung Yi is dating someone else. But then the sussy nation attacked as Sung Yi herself popped out, purposely showcasing the beauty by asking Sung to turn off the lights. Now clearly, this isn't for daylight savings time as our boy is fully in, but at least he's still a gentleman in his heart. So in the end, he actually flicks off the flight, foreshadowing what he's about to do next with those skills. As soon as the energy bill was being saved, Sung Yi comes out to greet Sung, but this time, the clothes are in another room. But like a true Sigma male, he runs out of the room into the shower, but even Gam comes in as if he's trying to be Casper the Friendly Ghost. Although Sung Yi is totally into Sung, we all know Gam is the one the most excited out of the three, since it's lonely being a ghost. Gam then used his final attack, making Sung's brain finally tick as he tells him that if he doesn't do it, someone else will. And just like that, the gentleman's Sung is gone, as he's now replaced by a boy who only wants a banana plantation fully watered and fully grown. But as if Gam is an annoying girlfriend, he keeps pestering Sung to do things like turning on the lights so he can see, or using his magical abilities to get the show on the road. But now Sung is a sent for Gam, grateful that he has given him his ghost powers, so he actually asks her if he can turn on the light. So Sung gives the amazing excuse of wanting to look her in the eyes, so that's why he wanted to turn on the light bulb. Of course, she agrees and swoons at the same time, even though it ain't even looking dark at all. After turning on the light, another beep happens, as if something has switched on in Sung's head. Within seconds, Sung started to attack using full force, as if he's turned into a savage. Things then escalate super fast, as if Sung's power level instantly swung past level 9000, since the whole neighborhood can now hear Sung Yi over and over. With his stamina levels over the roof, he asks if he can keep going, so without any hesitation. Sumi agrees that she needs more of the grown banana trees in the plantation. Now let's be real here. We all know Sung is going to regret it all. After he gains the sage like clarity when he explodes later. Suddenly, the two are interrupted by our friend Gam since he points at the game pop up, alerting Sung that he has a new quest. Sung instantly accepts, so he quickly attempts to finish the quest of blowing up inside, since he apparently has no problem anymore. While they are busy fusing into one ultimate being, Sung Yi's phone starts to ring. Regardless, Sung Yi has no care left in the world as the only thing that matters right now is making sure she takes care of the banana tree inside her house. Her phone continues to ring for over an hour, but instead, her head becomes dizzy from all the ringing she's receiving. Eventually, she decides to pick up the phone since it got too annoying for her, but you know, you could always turn it off or put it on silent. It turns out to be the manager. Luckily, Sung Yi trembles without making any sounds as she's busy trying to stabilize herself. 
Things then take the ultimate sussy baker turn as Gam convinces Sung to enjoy the thrill. So he ends the break, causing Sungi to make an excuse to cover up. It was at this moment I knew that this boy will never turn back to his original self, as chaos finally reached his mind. Unfortunately, it didn't help that Sungi was totally into the entire ordeal. So she returns the favor, transforming into a bull, chasing a red-colored banana tree trunk. In the end, both become too tired to continue riding as their bike ride proved too much to handle. So the two cuddle as they try to recuperate all the energy they have lost, but they begin conversing about what happened last night. It then dawned on Sung Yi that Sung might have no idea that she's dating the manager right now, so she comes clean to him. Sung Yi discovers that he knew the entire time, so as if today was April Fool's, she pretends to be mad, claiming how she could have gotten married soon. But in reality, she used it as an opportunity to go on another bike ride, as she was fast to regain all her energy for another round. As such, the two continued into the evening, but he ended up kicking her out of his room since it's time for him to raid on World of Warcraft. As he finishes up his raid day, he checks his status screen as he wanted to know more about the rewards he gained after completing the quest with Sungi earlier. So he turns to Gam, asking him how he can check what items he received, so Gam tells him to open up his inventory screen. After tinkering with his status windows, he ends up finding the inventory screen, so he taps on it. Shortly after, a continuous flash appears, showcasing all the new items he has received within his inventory. So like a true gamer, instead of researching more about his new items, he straight up attempts to use his first item to figure out what it does. Luckily, Yam is able to stop him right before he accidentally used the item, as it turns out to be a super rare item that Sung should be saving. The rare item is revealed to have an effect on anyone he uses it on, where it basically allows him to do whatever he wants for 5 minutes. Upon realizing the true power of the item, he starts ignoring Gam as he's too busy thinking about who should use it on. Eventually, Gam pops up, advising Sung to use it on someone he can't conquer, someone like Ariana Grande, since she's a well-known celebrity. Gam also advises him to save the potion, since he can use the other item as he waits instead. Sung is shocked at the revelation of what the second item does, as it apparently allows his banana plantation to grow larger than usual, so he instantly decides to use it. Now that was a weird choice since only Gam is around, with not a single girl nearby. Nonetheless, as he waits for the item to activate, he lays down in bed, replaying every moment and event that has happened today in his head. Some then begins to get tired, so he yawns and asks Gam what time he usually sleeps at. Gam smirks as his response, telling him that ghosts don't sleep at all. Unfortunately for the lonely ghost, Sung leaves him hanging as he wants to go to sleep, but Ghost Gam decides to pester him. To wake him up, he tries telling him a story about the time he got to experience two girls entering his banana plantation at the same time. So within seconds, Sung achieves his second wind as he turns around to listen to his story, claiming that he too wants to experience the same thing. Sung intently listens, not caring that he has work in less than two hours as Gam is too busy telling him about his escapades with two twins during high school. But Sung accidentally falls asleep when the ghost turns around to try and reenact what happened. The next morning, Sung gets ready to head off for the day, but he's confused as to why the pill didn't work. Gam then knocks the senses into him, telling him that it doesn't matter if he has no confidence, since that's what he needs instead of an enlarger. So Sung leaves the apartment, telling her ghost bro that he will try his hardest to remember to always be confident no matter what. Upon arriving at work, he looks at the mirror to try and level up his charisma, but Gam has had enough of his antics. As such, Gam pushes him inside the door, as Ghost Man needs some more entertainment to spicy up his dead life. However, once inside, Sung meets his true crush named Choi, but she looks at him with disgust. She then insults his new look, causing Sung's confidence to be totally shattered. With the unexpected turn of events, Sung furiously blames Gam, but he tells him to chill and to just ignore her instead. So Sung lets her go without saying anything, trying to play hardball, but another coworker starts to sneak up behind him. It turns out to be Sung Yi, who finds herself already absolutely flustered just at the sight of our boy. She then gets close to his ear, whispering to him how she had so much fun last night even with the manager close by. Sung Yi then dashes out while the manager catches Sung staring at her, causing his suspicions to be maybe reach a warning level. During your two-hour break time, the manager sends Sung to empty the trash, something he's never had to do before. So he starts grumbling to himself, asking why he has to be such a pushover, probably because he sieged the manager's girlfriend's fortress. Regardless, as he takes out the trash, he starts hearing weird sounds from behind the restaurant. As if he's Snake from the Metal Gear series, Sung stealthily investigates closer, where he finds the manager leaving the room where the sound was coming from hastily. Gam then appears out of nowhere, telling Sung to check the door to try and find out who else was inside. So he decides to investigate, but ends up finding Sung-hee behind the door his boss quickly ran from. 
So now it's clear as day as to what happened behind the scenes, but Sung Hee tries to explain they were actually keeping it family friendly the entire time by only giving each other a quick kiss. However, Sung smirks as he notices Sung Hee is also hiding the fact that she's trying to sneak a lighter in the storage room, while her manager Simp is busy distracted. Nonetheless, with her caught in the act hiding something from the boss, she attempts to just flirt with him instead, but she's already super flustered. As the two start teasing each other, Yam bursts out of nowhere, quickly interrupting Sung to tell him he should siege Sung Hee, as now is the perfect time to water his banana plantation. Upon hearing his suggestion, Sung instantly hesitates and calls the ghost bro crazy. But Gam counters by claiming that there's no experience that comes close to seeking in public, so he must do it. As Sung contemplates what to do, Sung Hee starts getting worried for him, since he looks like he's talking to the wall. Of course, Sung Hee cannot see or hear Gam, and now that's a good thing, as Gam is busy trying to egg on Sung to destroy some rice cakes while it's hot out of the oven. Eventually, Sung loses his intrusive thoughts, so he begins attacking, telling her out loud that he cannot wait any longer. At the same time, Ghost Bro Gam fully closes the door behind them, as he's looking out for the two plus he wouldn't want anyone to interrupt his front row seats at the spicy show. With the show now on the road, a game notification appears, notifying Sung that he's now gained a passive ability that increases the lethality of his oil machine. Now I don't know who's more excited here, the man using a battering ram or a ghost watching the battering ram you guys tell me. Anyways, with a brand new passive skill allowing his battering ram to be much more effective, Sung he finds herself in the heavenly realms, this time without help from the magic wand of Japan. Meanwhile, at the front of the restaurant, the manager finds himself wondering where Sung he went, since she was just literally here a moment ago. Maybe a ghost stole her, who knows, right guys? Now I can't believe Sung would do this to his friend, as boss man is a very nice guy, and now he's allowing his girl to drink his extra large Slurpee with the help of the ghost. Me personally, I wouldn't let that slide, so hopefully boss man catches the two in the middle of the act. After looking around for a while, he decides to go back to the storage room, but he starts hearing some faint sounds coming from the restricted area. Inside the restricted area, the two are still busy making dubstep as Sung keeps dropping the bass into Sung Hee over and over. Regardless, as the two continue on, Boss Man decides to inch closer to make sure he's not hearing things, but to his surprise, the repeated sounds get louder as he gets closer. Eventually, Boss Man decides to open the door to further investigate, since what else could the sound be? Luckily for Sung, Gam saves the day by somehow activating his ghost powers to show himself to the boss man so he can distract him from the main show. Mission success. As we all know, everyone is super scared of ghosts, so boss man passes out after realizing that he just witnessed a ghost in real life. With the sudden loud thud happening behind the door, the two lovebirds take a quick moment to pay respects to the fallen comrade. Ghost bro Gam then reappears, closing the door behind him again and signals to Sung to keep going as he took care of everything. Now that's true brotherly love if I would say so myself, risking his ghost identity just to make sure Sung is able to keep on trucking. Anyways, Sung and Sung he continue the train journey to Hogwarts without a care left in the world, and we can leave the rest to your imagination. With the train journey finally reaching its destination, Sung he hops off but later realizes that Sung accidentally exploded within her gardens, so she is furious at him since boss man might accidentally witness some milk leak. Regardless, the two finally end up leaving the room only to find a passed out boss man laying on the ground with a lot of whipped cream coming out of his mouth. Now like a true menace, Sung makes the joke that it looks like the two aren't going on a date tonight anymore, as it looks like boss man is super lactose. Fast forward an hour later, both Sungi and Sung find themselves at a clinic as they await for boss man to wake up, since it was mostly their fault anyways. It's then revealed that he's actually perfectly fine but he accidentally rolled his ankle earlier and when he woke up, he was too busy screaming about a ghost over and over. Of course, ghosts aren't real, Sung says, since there's only pervy sage reincarnations like Gam instead. Sung then quickly changes the topic of the conversation, telling Sung he's glad boss man is safe since things could have been worse especially if he slipped on soap. Regardless, with no clue on how boss man accidentally passed out, Sung Yi whispers to him that she can't believe both of them almost got caught at the restaurant. Sung nods in agreement but then he taps her in the shoulder asking her if she felt the thrill rush through her blood as they were attacking and defending in public. Initially hesitant to answer the question, she starts figuring to show how she really feels, but then Sung sneakily asks if she's down for a second round to start right now at the clinic. With Sung now a total sussy Becca, his powers reward him with another game notification notifying him that Sung he wants him to siege her walls like ASAP Rocky. It then turns out that our boy somehow didn't mean a second round of rice cake smashing as he meant something else. So he gets nervous after reading the game prompt. 
With a timely appearance, Gan whispers to Sun that he totally has her in the bag fully, since with her even hearing him wrong, her light bulb instantly turned on. So with Sun He busy craving the fire truck, she starts pretending she's not into it. But she finds herself busy muttering out loud that boss man could wake up at any moment and anyone could come in at any time. With his cheats and powers letting him know she's ready to rumble, Gan puts his hand on Sung's shoulder and orders him to go get him tiger. As Sung is unable to decide, Gan the devil begins to cosplay a bull while breathing through his nose, urging Sung to take action and to help Sung Yi achieve her dreams. Eventually enough blood rushes down Sung's banana plantation causing it to mature, so he ends up fulfilling her dreams with a passed out boss man right in front of them. She then starts playing pretend as if her light bulb isn't about to explode due to their current circumstances, so Sung decides to elevate the sussy level even more. And just like in gymnastics class, he throws Sung Yi around gracefully to find a better way to siege the walls with his battering ram ready to charge on forward. As we're about to fast forward, Sung tells her to make sure the city does not make a sound as the neighboring boss man can wake up at any time. It was then at this very moment Sung has transformed from a good boy into an actual transformer, since the movies are straight up garbage. Anyways, his machine ends up spilling once again and this time Sung Yi does not care at all, so a notification pops up alerting Sung that he has finally conquered Sung Yi. Fast forward to the evening, Gam looks like a proud father as he hypes up Sung to keep on going with everything, since he's exceeded every expectation since meeting him that one fateful day. However, Sung receives some post-banana sage-like clarity, so he begins to regret some things he's done in life, claiming that it doesn't feel right at all. Upon hearing Sung sound a bit defeated, Gam goes on a tirade explaining that he doesn't need to love anyone to send in a battering ram since it's literally just like how you don't always need to poop after eating. You know what Gam actually has a point since he's right, I don't always have to go to the bathroom after eating unless it's some cracked up Taco Bell meal. Upon hearing Gam's very correct analogy, Sung continues taking a sip of his drink and almost gets swayed to his opinion. As such, Gam decides to clap his hands to distract Sung from using his brain and tells him it's time the duo make a motto and pack together. But the cherry on top, Gam orders Sung to repeat after him or else he will revoke his special screen and powers use so he instantly gets up and repeats after Gam. So now that Gam has Sung under control again, Gam interrupts him while busy thinking about how lucky he is to meet a ghost, as he wants both of them to pick the next target together. The next target was supposed to be Sung's actual crush named Mi and Choi, but Gam thinks she's a hard one to crack as there's some kind of defensive aura stopping them so they need to level up real quick. Luckily for Sung though, his restaurant is famous for having beautiful women so Gam already took his time to pick out some of the best ones. And so, Gam reveals to Sung that he has created a target list with Choi number 1, but since she's not available, number 2 is a girl named Moon Jung Na. Gam then continues on while Sung is busy day dreaming about the girls, so he reveals the third one is Song Yi Kim. Now here's the thing right? Every single girl on the list are bong shells but one of them is not like the other. Sung then discovers that the last one is named Sung Kyung Jie, but he realizes the girl that doesn't work there, as he's not familiar with the name. Apparently, she lives inside their apartment complex, so he's closer to her than anyone else on the list since she's literally just a minute away. And she also happens to own that entire building, so she rich rich if she owning the entire building. It then turns out that she's the reason Gam moved to this apartment complex in the first place, as he basically fell in love at first sight, and soon he will understand what he means. So now Gam wants Sung to complete his unfinished business for him, as Gam is basically Sneeko, and he's ready to watch anytime, anywhere.